Good morning. Uh, I'm going to talk today about the gospel and how you can know for certainty, without any doubt, uh, that you can spend eternity with God in heaven. In 1975, I had an opportunity to go to Europe with a group called Operation Mobilization. I had been spending some time in a uh, little apartment up in Colorado, and I was desirous to want to do something for God after what he did for me. And uh, a friend of mine invited me to a Bible study. Uh, actually, it was a prayer meeting in a basement. It was only three people, me and a businessman and then another guy. And I would run a couple of miles every morning to go there. And uh, we'd go in that basement. And the only thing in the basement was a map of the world. And we'd get down on our knees and we'd pray over this map that God would send laborers into the harvest. <clears throat> I never dreamed that I'd be one of them. Um, before the year was out, I was on my way to France, Belgium, to Italy, and uh, had one of the most amazing summers of my life. When I was in Belgium, I went to uh, university there, and I was speaking to some uh, students. And uh, we were there to present the gospel to them. And, and as I was sharing with them, uh, one of the students told me he's, that uh, there was no such thing as sin. And... I asked him to explain that to me, and and he did. And you see, the, the problem with that is if, if there is no such thing as sin, then there's no need of a Savior, okay? So I knew right away that there's no point in sharing the gospel with him until, first of all, he, he, he becomes convinced that he's a, a sinner. You know, the Bible says that for we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. What is sin? You know, a lot of people come up with a lot of crazy definitions. Sin is missing the mark. And the mark that God has for every human being is perfection. If we fall short of perfection, we have sinned. God expects us to be perfect in order to get to heaven. When we got a problem, is nobody's perfect. There was only been one perfect person that has ever lived, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so what God did is he did for us what we could not do for ourselves, okay? And so the first thing we got to recognize, if, if we want to get to heaven, and we want to spend the eternity with God forever, we got to recognize that we're sinners, Okay? that we're helpless, and that we need a Savior. Now, a, a lot of people, they, they introduce strange things to the gospel which they shouldn't do. For instance, let me, let me give an example. The word repent. The word repent can mean a couple of different things. Okay, uh, a lot of people use it as a means to change your behavior, do an about-face. Well, uh, yeah, that's true if you're a Christian. But if you're not a Christian, that's not what it means at all. Because you don't have the ability to change. It's not in your nature to change. You don't have that ability. If you had it, then you wouldn't need to repent. You'd be perfect. Okay, repent in terms of salvation means to have a change of mind of what you've been trusting in. Okay, uh, I was Catholic. I trusted in the sacramental system. Okay, you know, you're, um, you get baptized as a baby, you're confirmed, you uh, get communion and all that stuff, okay? And I figured, well, at the end of my life, God will put me on a scale and whichever one weighs the most would determine my eternal outcome. I was wrong, okay? And I was completely lost and misinformed about what uh, I needed to do in order to be saved, and the fact of the matter is, I couldn't repent, okay? I didn't have that ability to repent. My nature was that of a sinner. And it, doesn't, it shouldn't surprise anybody when people sin. That's their nature, okay? So 
what I needed to do was to learn the gospel properly. Okay, so we need to understand that in, in the Bible, there's a lot of words that are used in different ways, depending on its context. Okay, if I use the word salvation in the Bible, it doesn't always mean that you're saved from your sins. Sometimes it can mean that you're saved from a nation or for a particular outcome, okay, or from drowning. So we got to keep in mind the context, not only the immediate, but the remote context of how a word is used. In terms of the gospel, the word repent means to change what you're trusting in. When I was Catholic, I trusted in the sacramental system. But I had to change my mind because that wasn't going to get me to heaven. Okay, because it's still, even if I did all those things, it doesn't eradicate or remove the sins that is in my life. I had to change my mind on what I was trusting in. What are you trusting in? Well, first, we got to recognize we're sinners. Second thing we got to recognize is there's, there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. It's not possible. Okay, third thing we got to recognize is what Jesus did and who he really was. Okay, he was God. And he came, and when he died on the cross, he took upon him all the sins of all humanity. Not just some, but for everyone. Past, present, and future, he took on all their sins. And in doing so, he paved the way for us to be reconciled back to God. Okay, so if you want to spend eternity with God in heaven, you've got to recognize you're a sinner. You, there's nothing you can do about it except to change your mind and who and what you're trusting in to get you there. Now, in 1973, when I got saved, and I had a lieutenant from the Air Force who explained that to me, man, my eyes opened wide up, and it made a lot of sense to me. Okay, that salvation was a gift. There was nothing I could do to earn it. I mean, what price can you put on the death of Christ? And you can't. So when he shared that, that I was a sinner, I was separated from God, that if I died in my sins, I'd spend eternity apart from him in hell. And, he's, and, 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 he's, and I told him, I said, well, if that's true, and nobody's going to be saved. And, and, and Paul said, yeah, that's right. He says, unless you put your trust and change what you're trusting in for your salvation. And right away, my eyes opened. I said, yeah, that's what I need to do. He asked me, do you want to do that? I said, I'd be a fool not to. So uh, right then, a very interesting thing happened. I tr changed what I was trusting in, which was works, to trust in the finished work of Christ. That alone, nothing else. The minute I did that, the second I did it, I took on a new nature. I now had the ability to repent, to change my behavior. You cannot habilitate that which is not habilitatable. You go in the bookstore and you have all these self-help books and you can self-help and you can, all you are is become a more sophisticated sinner. But you're still a sinner. Okay, until you put on Christ. Then you put on his righteousness. Then it's no longer you that live, but Christ that lives in you. It's called the exchange life. Okay. Listen, the second I did that, and I made that change in my mind about what I was trusting in to get to heaven, I was born again. I was saved, not for a period of time, but for eternity. I was transferred from the domain of darkness into light. I became God's son. And since that time, he's been molding and shaping me into the image of his son. Now, he had a lot of work to do with me. I had a lot of stuff to get rid of in my life and still do, you know. But that's the beauty of it. You can't do anything to earn your salvation, and you can't do anything to maintain it. It's done. It's complete. It's finished. So if you want to spend eternity with God in heaven, what you got to do is you got to admit that you're a sinner. You got to change what you've been trusting in to get you there. You got to put your trust in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ 
And you got to invite his free gift into your life and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. And I now am born again, and I want to serve you the rest of my life. You all have a great day.